What's up guys, my name is Jesse Kazam and welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, we're going to be doing a general overview of the new military base or reserve map. Now this guide, like my other map guides, are geared more towards beginners to Escape from Tarkov. Uh, if you're looking for a more advanced guide of the map, there's a lot of great videos out there breaking down all the different key locations and the keys and advanced loot runs and all sorts of stuff like that. But this is more of a general overview of the flow of the map, the extraction, some things you need to know so that you can dive in and have a blast uh, if you like this video drop a thumbs up or subscribe for more content like this i stream escape from tarkov about four days a week and all my links will be down below but with all that out of the way let's go ahead and dive right in So this is the reserve military base map in Escape from Tarkov. Uh, I'll have this map linked down below so you can pull this up for reference if you're hopping into some raids. Um, but this map is a really cool kind of like step forward for Escape from Tarkov. So the devs talk a lot about really wanting to raise the bar every time they do a new map. And they've definitely done so with this map. Um, they've broken a lot of the molds and kind of like uh, differentiated this and a lot of its mechanics. Uh, you've got a lot of really cool things like mounted um, LMGs and fully automatic grenade launchers. You've got all sorts of dynamic extracts. You've got the addition of a new scav boss and special AI that follow him around. Um, all of these buildings, it's, it's the biggest map in Escape from Tarkov when it comes to like lootable space and area. All these buildings, almost every single room on every single floor, you can go in and search and there's just like a lot to it. It's a really cool, really dynamic map. There's all, like most of the Escape from Tarkov maps, it supports a wide range of gameplay styles. If you want to just long range snipe, there are places on this map that you can do that. And if you wanted to get into some really close quarters combat, you can absolutely do that as well so we'll dive in by just kind of giving a general overview of the map what's cool about this map is that uh, a lot of the things are kind of like labeled uh, with these like chess pieces that you see here uh, so up here you've got the king this is like the radar tower this gives you a great view of almost the entire map here there's a lot of good loot that you can find up here and it's close to one of the extractions we'll get to that in a little bit You've got a grouping of buildings right here, kind of like pawn one, two, and three. Um, the queen and bishop buildings here. Uh, the queen building is widely known now for like really profitable loot. A lot of hideout loot, military stuff spawns in there. Uh, so a lot of people run to there uh, quickly and get some of that stuff done. On the outside here, you have a lot of like... Um, like broken down tanks and bunkers, small little bunkers you can go into. Uh, down in the bottom right side, you have this whole uh, train station. Uh, the armored train is one of those dynamic extracts. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, a lot of cool loot spawns here. Um, and down here, you've got some more bunkers. Uh, around the edges here, you'll see there's a lot of like little towers, like little sniper towers that you can get up in. Uh, more small bunkers and broken down uh, tanks over here. And then another parking lot with some uh, like garage style buildings around here. Uh, so a lot to loot, a lot of stuff to do. Um, there is even actually an entire like few underground sections to this map. Uh, so right here with these bunkers down at the bottom of the map, uh, you can go down. It's also accessible from the train station. And there's uh, several locked rooms down here with some loot. And then also with this pond building on this side of the map, uh, there is access underground all the way up to the radar tower and this huge spiral staircase and a whole bunch of underground stuff there as well. It's not represented here, um, but you can find those and it's really fun exploring those and using those to kind of reposition throughout the map. Um, so when you spawn, you're always going to be looking for a point of reference to know kind of where you are. The absolute biggest and easiest point of reference is this dome. Uh, so you can basically just kind of like look up and start scanning a little bit above you and see, you know, what reference you are to that dome. You know what I mean? If you see it kind of from this angle, you're probably spawning over here. If it's you spawn and you look around, it's immediately way up here on your right. Then you're over here by CP fence. Um, that kind of stuff. It's the easiest from basically if you just cut a diagonal line down this map, if you're anywhere on this side of the map, that's an immediate point of reference to know kind of where you spawned and where you are. And then 
the other half here you can use the train station as reference the kind of like ground floor of all of this it's it's relatively not small but everything is so close together that it is really easy to almost immediately kind of gain a reference for where you are um the general flow of the map isn't really one that pushes you from one side to the other. So in a lot of the other Scheme from Tarkov maps, how they're set up right now is you spawn on one side, you have to extract on the complete other side of the map, and that's the general flow. You loot on the way, you PvP on the way, but you're going that other direction. This is less so. This I, I find this map is, has a lot of looting, a lot of exploring some of these other buildings. Um, some of the hot zones are going to be uh, the train station. The dome was, once again, a phenomenal vantage sniping vantage on so much of the map that a lot of PvP either happens up there or a lot of long-range fights happen um towards that dome now there's a lot of ways that you can kind of get an angle on that dome from the lower half of the map so definitely explore don't feel like uh, just because someone's up there it's op you have to hide there's a lot of cheeky ways to get an angle on that dome um and so, yeah, the map is a lot about PvP, exploration, looting, and then extracting. Um, the extractions on this map are very dynamic extractions. There is no place, at least as a PMC, that you can just go and extract like most of the other maps. So this is kind of an evolution of a lot of the extraction mechanics that we've seen on the Terra Group Labs map. Uh, so we'll kind of go through these. We'll include the scav extracts because there's so a uh, few of them that are scav extracts only. Uh, so we can just kind of go through them all. So up at the top here, Cliff Descent is right behind the dome here. Now, in order to use this extract, you need the Red Rebel pickaxe as your melee weapon which is like an ice pick and a paracord on you now the paracord does not get consumed so you can throw the paracord in your secure container if you're going to reserve if you've got that red rebel pickaxe and at any point with those two things on you you can just go here and extract but you cannot be wearing body armor so you can either chuck it and hope you get back in insurance or if you have room in your bag you can put your body armor in your bag and you're good to go the last i checked you were good to go if you were wearing an armored rig but no actual body armor so moving around the side here this uh the yellow ones are the scav only extractions and uh the scavs have a few ones that you can just extract as you when you go to um that's up here uh you'll see like a little crack hole in the wall it's literally called hole in the fence by the mountains just use this dot as reference uh, and when you start to extract that's how you know you're in the right place moving down here the scav lands uh, so this is a red one pmcs and scavs can use this and this is a super interesting mechanic that they're adding you need to have a scav and a pmc present in order for this to work you guys can wear full gear you can have backpacks but there has to be a scav so if you're a pmc you need to befriend a scav a player scav instead of shooting it and go there together and we've seen to incentivize this if you do this if you extract with a scav because at first everyone's like well who's going to do that well a few people did and fence will actually send both of you whoever was playing us the scav and the pmc a package in the mail for working together and i've seen on reddit and a few other places like red key cards or key tools or sometimes crazy i mean sometimes it's really nothing but sometimes it has the potential for some really insanely valuable loot so i think that's a really cool thing uh you just never know if someone's going to want to be friendly or not um, but there's incentive for both parties to be friendly the heating pipe is another scav only one uh it's pipes coming over the wall here once again as a scav you can just walk up to that and extract no problem the red here hermetic bunker door so this is both a scav and a pmc extraction now you'll see on this left group of bunkers here two of the doors are open they connect but all the way over here in this kind of if you're looking down on it to the right this last bunker here all the way in the back you'll see a light and kind of a fenced in area that's the extraction but you have to open that extraction by flipping a switch in a little uh shack that's right here above the queen building when you flip that switch an alarm starts to go off and that alarm goes off for i want to say about five minutes it's loud it's annoying uh, but it lets everybody know what's happening then you can run 
back here to the uh, bunker door and it will be available for you to just walk up to and extract. If you don't extract by the time the alarm turns off, you're going to have to go flip that switch again. So this is only open while that alarm is turned off. Now be aware if somebody else flips the switch and you're on this side of the map and we're looking to extract, you can absolutely just hop right in um, or potentially wait because somebody might be trying to come there. Another thing to note with the Hermetic Door is that this has the potential to spawn in some scav raiders, uh, the same raiders that you see on Terra Group Labs with their same loot. As far as I know, it's not 100% chance that they'll spawn in, but there is an option. They can spawn underground. They can spawn in these bunkers, and I've seen them out here by the train station as well. Uh, so be aware that you can uh, be running into some really high geared scavs if you click that. But that's a great way to kind of just stir some stuff up on the map. Moving on, the armor train, another PMC and scav extract. This is an actual physical train that will ride in on the uh, train tracks here uh, at some point during the map. I'm not 100% sure if it's a consistent at every time, but I haven't really seen it happen early on in a map. Uh, so towards the middle or back end of that actual raid, uh, it'll come in, it'll kind of blow its train whistle as it's coming in. It'll wait for a little bit. It'll blow its train whistle again when it's going to be leaving in a few minutes. And then it'll blow it a final time when you basically have like one more minute to get there. If you are in the train when it starts to drive away, you'll extract. It'll just be like three, two, one, and you'll get out of there. Um, but if you miss it, you miss it. So once again, it's another thing that really lets everybody know that this extraction is available at any given moment. And, uh, Basically, everybody has the opportunity to go there. So it's another time where you might be getting into some PvP or PvE during your attempt to extract. Around the back here is another uh, scav CP fence. That's just kind of here on this side of the map. Same thing. If you just kind of walk up to it, you'll start to extract. And then the last one is right here in the middle by these parking garages. And that is the manhole. Uh, similar to the vents in Terra Group Labs, you cannot be wearing a backpack. I think on labs, you can be wearing an MBSS or below. But on this, you can't wear a backpack at all. So if you're hurt and you just need to get out, you can ditch your backpack and extract at the manhole. You just walk up to it and it'll extract you. Be wary though, the uh, dome up here has a phenomenal line of sight on the manhole. So especially if you're extracting early in a raid, uh, just be checking up there because somebody could absolutely be just sniping you. Um, so the hot zones, like we said, there's uh, a lot of loot in the queen building. There's a lot of stuff going on at the train. Um, and then a lot of these buildings, also the pond buildings, especially this one up here and this have a lot of loot in them. And there can be a lot of PVP happening there. Um, one of the cool new additions to this map as well is a brand new scav boss, Gluhar. Um, so he is a mean dude. He's got, he has the potential to spawn with an M1A or in one of the new Ash 12s, uh, a bunch of different guns. And he has um, anywhere between like two or three, and I've heard of up to seven scav guards with him as well. Um, they have a brand new AI. They are very aggressive. Um, they, if they see you, a lot of times they'll break and a few of them will stay behind to protect Gluhar and a few of them will really aggressively rush you. Um, this scav boss is really hard. His uh, kind of minions or cronies can spawn with multiple weapons, armor, um, really high tier helmets. I've even seen like a Vulcan, like class six um, helmet on these so it's a really cool i love the concept of the scav bosses and that's a brand new one uh he can spawn uh, around the armored train is where he is a lot of the time but i have definitely seen him in these buildings as well in this pawn buildings and also in the garage here so there is actually basically the the all of the major points of interest down here on the ground level uh, he can be in and uh, just be very careful if you see him or hear him uh, because you're never going to know how many guards he's got on him. Um, but he is really fun to take down, to track down uh, and kind of, you know, just kill and get a, potentially a lot of loot with his scav guards. Uh, one of the strategies I've seen a lot, especially if he's over here by these buildings, is letting their aggression work to your uh, advantage. So, you know, if you're in a pond building here and you um, 
and he sees you or one of his guards see you and they start rushing you get into a room hold a position most likely they will kind of file in through that door in pursuit of you and you can kind of drop them and use that to your advantage uh, otherwise i would say disengage and try to fight from a distance if you can um so that's basically it. Another just kind of like quick uh, thing to note. If you're standing up here by the dome and you look this way, uh, you actually see the resort on shoreline. So this is a really cool detail that we're starting to see this world of Tarkov come together and be woven in together. And uh, in theory, this cliff descent brings you down to shoreline. Now, it doesn't actually right now, but they've talked about weaving those maps together. Um, and then... That being said, another thing to note, if you like to learn the maps as far as like directional north, south, east and west, this map is then going to be kind of upside down. This is the south side of the map and this is the north side of the map. And that's because if we're looking back here at the shoreline resort, we're looking at the back of the resort right here, which we know the resort is on the north side of shoreline, then this is kind of a continuation of that. And, uh, so a lot of people think that this is the north side of the map. This is actually, if you're standing on the map, this is the south side of the map. This is the north side of the map. Uh, that's really just if you like to learn the maps that way, or if you're working with a duo or a squad and you guys like to call out like that, um, that's just something to be aware of so that if they do start to stitch these together, you're not going to get confused one day. But I hope this helped. I know there's a lot of information here, but there's a lot of really cool changes that they're making. Um, a lot of really cool boundaries getting pushed by the developers. This is a really cool map. I hope that this got you excited to play. I hope that this answers some questions. And uh, I hope that this helps you be more successful in your mill-based runs on Escape from Tarkov. Thank y'all so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. My goal is always to create high quality content that shortens the learning curve of Escape from Tarkov and gets you in your raids having fun as soon as possible. I hope this helped. And if you have any questions about this video or if there's any videos you'd like to see me make here in the future, please drop a comment down below. Thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.